Jen Mallon. Welcome to Come Home. You know, I had an incredible salvation rededication experience. It happened in 1990 in my grandmother's living room in Plant City, Florida. For the first time, I felt the tangible presence of the Holy Spirit come through a television camera and minister to me. I rededicated my life. It was radical. The host that day was Sheila Walsh from the 700 Club, and she led me in a precious, profound, simple prayer. I dedicated my life to Jesus. I said, not my will, but yours be done, and I really meant it. Following the break, she came back and she grabbed a microphone and she said, Pat, I feel like I'm supposed to sing this song to someone watching. So I'm leaning in because I didn't know that a television host could sing. And she opened her mouth and sang a song called Jennifer, Come Home. We are waiting for you. Jennifer, come home. How we miss you. The party can't begin till the family settled in. Jennifer, we love you. Don't you know we miss you? Come home. So if you've ever wondered why this show is called Come Home with Jen Mallon, that's why. And I believe the Holy Spirit is issuing you, the people you love, a very special invitation at this last little moment in history to come home, back to the Father, back to His love, back to revival, back to a fresh outpouring of the Holy Spirit. So today, we have a wonderful show. I have a wonderful man of God named Dr. Ben Lim with us again, and he pastors a church in Los Angeles. He is a revivalist. He is an evangelist. He's been to 56 different countries. He is an author. He's a young man. He loves the Hebrew feast, and he is on fire for Jesus. He's hungry. He's about his father's business. And today we're going to talk about uh, the Hebraic year 5783 and what it means to you and I. So stay tuned for this program. We're now going to go to our friend, Dr. G, and he has some great things to talk to us about on how we should have a different color of the rainbow in our foods every single day. Hey everybody, this is Dr. G with another one of my biohacks or health hacks for a good life. Many call me the Biohacker USA and of course I'm the medical doctor at CenteredForLife.com, the holistic Christian healing ministry in St. Simons Island, Georgia. You know, I love food, but more than that, I love good, healthy food that comes from our planet. These foods are natural, God-made, and also organic. One of my big things that I tell my patients who come to see me in their quest to be healthier is to eat the rainbow. The concept here is that if you can incorporate one to two servings of each color of the rainbow every day as either fruits or vegetables in your diet, you'll be healthier, you'll be satisfied, and you'll meet your nutritional requirements of most of the necessary vitamins, trace minerals, and phytonutrients that we need to survive. Now, I want you to think of the colors of the rainbow. They're bright and include yellow, tan, orange, red, green, and blue or purple. Interestingly, it doesn't really matter whether the food is a fruit or a vegetable. It only matters what color it is. So there doesn't need to be a fight with the kids over supper time that they didn't eat their tomatoes. You know, if they've eaten a fruit or a vegetable that was red that day, like an apple or watermelon or cherries, then they've eaten that red color for the day. The same goes for the other colors. I mentioned that people need one to two servings of a color each day. Now, ideally, a serving means a half a cup of that color. So a half a cup of green beans isn't going to be replaced by three green grapes, you know. <laughs> also, your choices of a specific color should vary throughout the week. 
If the kids have strawberries on Monday, then maybe try red bell peppers on Tuesday. You have to lay the ground rules of this plan out ahead of time to make it work. Have the kids go to the store or garden with you to pick out the colors that they want to try. I use a daily checklist in my practice to ensure that family members check off each of their colors every day of the week. You can set it up as a friendly competition. Perhaps there is a special reward at the end of the week if the kids and dad do a good job on the checklist. Okay, I know. The kids are going to ask if Starburst fruit chews and Skittles can count as eating the rainbow. You know the answer. It has to be a plant-based color. Phyto with a P means plant. So what we're talking about here is plant-based nutrients and the God-given chemicals that are natural that the plants make. These are known to not only be tasty, but are known to have healing qualities too. The science of all this is that all of these colors have healing, nutritional, and anti-inflammatory properties that prevent or reduce disease. They also help with our mental and emotional well-being. They're good for our brain, our heart, lungs, and our other organs. So isn't it nice that something as simple as a colorful salad can supply all of these fabulous phytochemicals in essentially just one serving? You can get more than one color at a time by eating attractive colorful salads. The other cool thing about eating all the colors of the rainbow is that because your body is no longer searching for the colors that it's missing, you will naturally lose your desire to just graze on bad junk or processed food. This is because your body knows that its needs have been met. Many people lose weight by doing this because they're not filling themselves up on empty calories anymore. Plus, their intestinal health is much improved too. So have fun with eating the rainbow in one of my many biohacks. I hope you learned something. I'll see you next time on Dr. G's Health Hacks. To learn more about eating the rainbow and other health hacks, visit me at www.biohackerusa.com and be sure to get my book, The Biohacker's Guide to the Galaxy, at amazon.com. May God bless you all and back to the studio. Welcome back. Thank you for being with us again today. It's always such a joy. And I'm so excited because, you know, just like Elizabeth and Mary, there's things that make my baby jump in my womb. And I am with someone who loves Hebrew roots and the calendar and the feasts. And so my baby's jumping. I don't know about his, but Dr. Ben Lim, thank you so much for being here today. Thanks for having me, Miss Jen. This, thank, this is awesome. Yay. Thank you for just your yes to God and your life and your ministry and just all the wonderful things. But before we get in our interview, let's go to this clip and just see a little tiny, tiny bit of Dr. Ben's life. Well, I hope that everybody will find you. Um, they can go on benlimglobal.com and find out lots about you, right? Absolutely, yes, that's correct. And Just they, Google me. Okay, yeah. that's even ben easier. Lim, yes. Okay, and they can order your book. Yes. Okay, so uh, we talked about it a little bit last time that you were here, but can you just give us a little infomercial on why they need to get this book, why it's so important? Absolutely. Well, the New Breed book, it really encompasses uh, the word for this generation, that God is raising up the nameless and the faceless, people from the deep down dungeons, from down under, people that have been hidden for so many years and for such a time as this. So God is raising people up uh, with the power of God like never before. So the New Breed, uh, you know, it, it's really about a new breed of apostles and prophets that God's raising up today uh, that is going to usher in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So uh, this book was born out of a 21-day revival, and uh, I believe it's a fulfillment of the prophecies of Bob Jones and Paul Cain of the Kansas City Prophets. So there's a new breed, and your name 
is written on it. So you're a part of it. That's awesome. Yes. So you get this book. It's very important. Get it for someone you love um, because there is a generation and they need to be affirmed in who they are and their identity. And you did such a great job. So you pastor in Los Angeles and the name of your church is Open Heavens World Church. Yes. I love that name. Thank you. How'd you get that name? Well, uh, you know, for a number of years, uh, my church was called His Way Life, uh, which was a name from my father, uh, as, as he was my overseer at the time. And we were praying about a name change. And of course, the Bible is filled with so many examples of name changes. Yes. And the authority, the power, the blessing in a name change from Jacob to Israel, to from Sarai to Sarah, from Abram to Abraham, from Petrus to Petrus. And so uh, I knew that it was time for a name change. And in the middle of uh, the pandemic during 2020, we changed the name of our church to Open Heaven's World. And originally we wanted something with glory, but uh, those names were taken already. Yeah. And I love Open Heavens. So the Lord said Open Heaven's World, because eventually this will be like a Disney World or a headquarters for the world. I love it. Yeah. Well, there's so much we can talk about. But I really think today what's burning on your heart, and I think it's very timely, is the significant meaning of 5783 in the Hebrew calendar, uh, Hanukkah that we're about to embark on, harvest, um, Isaiah 61. There's so much that we can unpack. So share with us the revelation that God's given you about these really important moeds, appointments, yes. God parties yeah. uh, with the Lord and, and how we can embrace them and then harvest personally what we need and then what the body needs right now. Absolutely. Well, the Bible is very clear that, like you said, the Moets or the Moeds, these are appointed times. And I like to tell people this is your God date. Yeah. So this is your appointment with God or your date with God. And if you're going to have an appointment with your boss or uh, with somebody you love, then you honor them by these uh, anniversary dates or these birthday celebrations. And these are God's anniversary or birthday celebrations. And uh, uh, a big one coming up, of course, is Hanukkah. We just passed the 10 days of awe yeah. uh, with the month of Tishrei. And now we're stepping into Hanukkah, which uh, is not one of the uh, seven biblical moeds, but it's still a moed. And uh, uh, again, it's, it's like the eighth moed, an yeah. eighth which means not of this world or from another world, from another realm. Uh, so it's important for us to celebrate because these are times of feasts. These are times of harvest. These are times of agricultural harvest and the ingathering of souls and saints. So I like to call these time portals mm -hmm. because this is a portal in the time realm that's opened up, that accelerates and everything begins to accelerate. And how you approach a time portal will determine your quantum leap effect. Wow. So there can be quantum leaps, or you can just be stagnant. You can just have one to one or one to three return. And how you approach these time portals or these moeet uh, will determine how far you leap in the next season. Uh, so Hanukkah, uh, of course, is the festival of lights. And yes. I believe that even as we end 2022, there's gonna be a big bang. There's gonna be big celebrations, fireworks, there's going to be big victories uh, in the political realm and the governmental realm. There's going to be big victories. So I believe that even as this year, 2022 ends, there's going to be fireworks. But of course, we're also already in the Hebrew year 5783. Right. And we're about to shift into 2023. Now, this is the most important year of our lives. Right. I believe with all my heart, and of course, with every year, every season, it's the most important year or season. But I believe this is the most important year of our lives yeah. because of what this year represents. And three in Hebrew is uh, gemel. Yes. And gemel uh, comes from the root word uh, gumel, right? And so gumel, which is the root word, it means recompense. Mm. And gumel means the dealing of hands. So this word gumel, which is the root word, it means recompense and a dealing of hands. So this is a year where God's going to deal with the dealing of hands. Ooh. And there's going to be a payment or a wage or the recompense, the retribution of what is rightly owed to you according to your hands. 
So there's going to be a washing of dirty hands. Mm. There's going to be an anointing of new hands. And there's going to be a, a feeling or a, a fulfillment within your hands. Amen. So I want you to stretch out your hands because this year, God's going to fill your hands with good things, treasures, and with deeds to lands at the harvest in this year of Gumel. So I want to share a little bit more because in this year of Gumel, of course, Gumel uh, means three. And Gumel, it also means three, which also means camel. So this is the year of the camels. Yes. And this is the year where the camels are coming to the church of the great transference of wealth. So the camels are coming, bringing provision, supply, yes. and bringing resources. Riches and treasures. Riches and treasures, yes, <laughs> Isaiah 45. Yes. So I believe that this year is the year where we're going to see the camels come. And again, Gamel in the Hebrew alphabet, it's shaped like a man that's running. Yeah, running man. And the running man, yeah, yes. Yeah. And it's not walking, it's running. Right. And it's also shaped like a foot, and that's why my foot is hanging out like this now, but it's shaped like a foot. Or a high heel. Or high heel, there yes. it is, yes, yes, high heel. Or boots or <laughs> yes. sandals, flip-flops. Uh, but it's shaped like a man that's running or a foot. Yeah. Because I believe God's gonna kick the devil in the teeth. Yes. And, and God's gonna kick the devil in the teeth, and not only that, but your holy feet or your big feet yeah. are gonna walk in lands and places yeah. that you've never been to. So this is a, a year of dominion. Yes. Because the Bible says wherever the soles of your feet touch, naturally and spiritually, you're going to own, possess those lands. Yeah. So this year we're gonna take dominion in governmental spheres, in uh, agricultural spheres, media, in Hollywood, and yes. family. Uh, so this is the year of the comeback. And three, of course, stands for the third day Resurrection. resurrection. So this is a year of resurrection power. Hallelujah. So the Lord spoke to me, uh, Dr. Jen, that the last few years, we went through hell. Yeah. We went through the pandemic. We went through all of these things on planet Earth. And it's been such an intriguing, difficult time for so many. Yeah. But the last few years have been like Jesus, buried. And now we are going to experience the third year of resurrection yes. power. Revelation rising from Sheol, rising from uh, the, the deep depths. And oh, Jesus amazing. rose again with the keys of death in Hades. So this is the year where we're going to be resurrected. Yes. We're going to rise up with the camels, with taking dominion. We're going to walk out in our destiny. We're going to walk forth on new lands, places, and spaces. And God is going to allow you to take dominion wherever you go. So this is that year of resurrection, revelation, and the camels. And you're gonna have divine direction in this year like never before. That's such good news because so many watching Dr. Ben, they, they are, they've written in, they've talked to me, they are saying, God, what is going on? They feel they've got spiritual vertigo or they've been knocked off balance. Uh, you can't be lukewarm anymore. Uh, it's it's not the season for that. And so just to hear um, what God gave you in this year and then the prophetic symbolism is huge. Restoration. We serve a God of restoration and um, he doesn't waste anything. So one thing um, I heard you say is that there, that the running man represents acceleration and movement and launching, and all of those are action words. And we, the body, um, have to be ready to go, to go. Absolutely. So, so how, do you, how are you sounding the alar alarm and giving the charge? Well, that's a great question, uh, Dr. Jen. Really, um, I believe even before this year, 2022 ends, um, of course, how we approach the Moids, the high holy days, and how we've been fasting, repenting, just really dialing in with tabernacles, et cetera, et cetera. It's really been the time of preparation. But I believe that as soon as January hits in 2023, things are really going to take off. Yeah. Okay, because God's been preparing us in the spirit and in prayer, in the womb of prayer, and now there's gonna be a launching and a birthing. So it's time to get the strategies, the downloads, and the wisdoms of God, because I believe a lot of people are uh, translocating or they're bilocating, they're moving. Yeah. So many of you watch right now, you may be in the middle of a move. You may be in the middle of, of selling your house or in the middle of, of signing some mortgage papers, a mortgage lease, but I believe many of you watching, God is moving you even
moving to a physical new location, to a new address, to a new zip code, to a new neighborhood. Amen. So this is a time and season where God is moving us. But uh, I believe that how we pray and how we approach the throne of God in this season boldly with confidence is going to determine how far we go. Now, I want to say one more thing, uh, Dr. Jen, because the Lord said that we are in a two-month window. And I know mm -hmm. many of you, you're watching right now, it's around the time of Hanukkah. But the Lord said we are in a two-month window right now from tabernacles to Hanukkah, tabernacles to Hanukkah. And I encountered an angel in my studio. Wow. And this was an angel of harvest. And this angel of harvest came down into my studio, in, in my spirit, and I saw this angel of harvest. And the Lord said, we are in a harvest season where there's going to be a harvest of finances. There's going to be a harvest of increase in numbers Amen. in this show on CTN. There's going to be an increase of harvest Amen. in your businesses, in your small businesses. There's going to be an increase of harvest. And that will be the sign of the acceleration yeah. and the preparation up to Hanukkah all the way to Purim. Because the Lord said from Hanukkah to Purim, Purim to Pentecost. Oof. All right, we, we are in a season and a window of incremental increase yeah. and blessings and acceleration. And I believe right now that these angels of harvest are being released. It says in the book of Revelation 19 that during the time of harvest, the angels were called were call forth. Yeah. So I believe we are in that time where angels are coming mm -hmm. to release harvest, to release bounty. So be expectant that even as we're about to close 2022 and step into 2023, three resurrection, revelation, mm -hmm. lands, dominion, and the camel, and even recompense. Yeah. So you are going to step into that as we transition into 2023. I love that. You know, in the book of Psalms, it says, I believe 63 or 68, it says um, that God is going to crown the year with a bountiful Bounty. harvest, yes. that even the dry, difficult, rough uh, places are going to produce massive harvest. You know, Amos 9.13 yes. talks about it, and I hear you saying it. and. Uh, even Revelation says, you know, thrust in thy sickle and reap for the harvest of the earth is white and it's ready. And I've said those scriptures for over, over 30 years, but I really believe that we are going to see it. It'll be a sign. It'll be a sign. It'll be the one new man coming together. And so I love that you are on fire about this. I love that you're talking about it. H how would you encourage a pastor watching that really wants a Book of Acts church because you really do have a Book of Acts church. You you are you are setting uh, an example. You are you are a new wineskin ministry. So to the pastor, the leader that's watching, they want it. They just don't know how to turn the corner. What would you say? I, I would say the biggest thing is hosting its presence. Yeah. And then building uh, a culture. The culture is the wineskin and the presence, his presence is the wine. And I would say it's really building a culture. Uh, and what that means is, is the way of life, right? Uh, culture in the original word cultura in Latin means your way of life. And so there has to be a people that are committed in having this culture, being carriers of his presence. When the ark returned, I believe the ark is returning. Amen. The glory of God is returning to America, even to the White House. The glory yes. of God is returning yes. to the church. And for too long, we have been Ichabod. And since 2020 with the pandemic to now, we are seeing more and more Ichabod ministries, Ichabod churches, Ichabod ministers, yeah. where people are falling, being exposed, things are happening. But we are going to see the glory of God return. Yes, we we're are. full throttle like never before. But the ark returned on the shoulders of the priests, yeah. which is the culture. And we have to, we need a priestly anointing, yes, which is also the royal anointing, because Jesus said that you are a royal priesthood. Yeah. So the ark, the glory is returning. The wineskin is hosted and brought in by the culture of the shoulders yeah. of priests, men, women of God, who are walking in reverence and honor before him. So that's the culture. So I believe to all those pastors watch right now, in midst of the shift, in midst of the shaking, in midst of all these things going on, I want to encourage you, continue to uh, be sensitive to the Lord. Don't box him in, don't structure him in. S steward his presence, host his presence. Go a little bit longer in worship. Yeah. 
pray a little bit louder and fervent prayer. Who cares if you're a fool for Christ? Who cares if you're judged? Yeah. Go after it and let revival tarry and watch what happens. And of course, there'll be separation, the sheep and the goats. Some people might leave because that always happens whenever yes. revival falls, but go after it and watch what happens. He's so worth it. He is. So I'm gonna put you on the spot. Um, how old are you? Right now, I'm 31 years young. Okay. Yes. And the only reason I ask that is because you are an exemplary young man that has studied to show himself approved, that has been mentored by some of the greats in the kingdom. Um, many mantles uh, have you been around, uh, and many have fallen it's on an you. Honor, yes. Yeah. What would you say to the young man out there that just says, yeah, I, I don't know how to do it. I, yeah, I'm, I'm struggling. Yeah. Ha, speak to the men. Just speak to that, to, to, the, to the man that just needs to know you can live this walk. You live a holy walk before the Lord and you're on fire. How can they do it? Absolutely. Well, I do have a book called Men of Valor, <clears throat> which addresses this very thing. But be like David, a young man after God's own heart. And when you are a worshiper, then you'll be a warrior. When you are a worshiper, then you'll be a shepherd. When you are a worshiper, then you'll be a king. And many men don't understand that they are already kings because they're not worshipers. Mm. And we need to go back to the secret place, understand your identity in the Lord, get your courage back, get your roar, your sound foundation back in Jesus. It's not found in how you look, and how many uh, women you've been with is not found in any of these things, but it's found in Jesus Christ alone. So I would say to all of the men, men of God, young men of God right there, I would tell you, seek his face, go after his presence, and also obey the Lord no matter what. Take the risks and watch God begin to anoint you and raise you up because we need men of God in this hour like never before. We do. And thank you for the example you set. Thank you for your yes to, to Jesus, to the Trinity. And thank you for everything you do for Israel. Thank you for educating. Um, it's just been a joy. I look forward to you coming back. Absolutely. And I encourage everyone watching, go on to benlimglobal.com, get his resources. You might wanna get that book on Men of Valor, get his book on the new breed, follow his ministry, pray for his ministry. Um, it's a beautiful season. Uh, things are shaking, but God has his hand on the church. He has his hand on you, and it is going to be a supernatural season. Thank you for being with us today. I'm Jen Mallon, and come home.